After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is Maxing a Main. Welcome back to episode 7 of Maxing a Main. So you might be wondering why I am here in Sears Village. Well, actually, you might not have even realized I was in Sears Village. But anyway, the reason I'm here is because I went to a wedding over the weekend. And in the hotel room, I was playing OSRS on mobile. And I thought I could do some agility training because it is pretty simple to do on mobile. And quite honestly, it will help me fall asleep in the hotel room. I almost got an entire agility level. We are only 7,000 XP away from level 71 agility. I'm not going to be getting 71 in this video, though, because it's just honestly, it's just ugly to look at. But we did manage to pick up 112 marks of grace. I'm going to be turning those into Amelie's pack so that we can make some extra money. But as you can see down here, we also got a mime random event where I got the mime top and mime boots. And we also got a genie lamp. I'm going to be using the XP lamp on construction. We are going to need level 10 construction for a quest coming up soon. And honestly, even though it'll only take a few seconds to get level 10 construction, I don't feel like training it regularly. So until we get to level 10 construction, every lamp that we get is going to be going on construction. So since we got quest ready last episode by unlocking all of the protection prayers, as well as getting level 70 agility, it is time to finally start doing some members quests for real. First quest I want to do is going to be dwarf cannon because it unlocks the ability to use the dwarf multi cannon and our range level is a pathetic level three right now. It's by far the lowest combat set that we have and getting a cannon will definitely help the early levels of range training. So that's why dwarf cannon is going to be the first thing that we do here in this episode. While I'm here at Barbarian Outpost, might as well start the tutorial so that we can use this teleport for free with our minigame teleports. And there we go. We should now be able to teleport. I always forget how to do this now. I'm so used to it being a red thing in your quest list. But I think, is it over here? Yes. And then I should be able to teleport here. Nice. Okay. Barbarian teleport is unlocked. Now, again, since we're here, let's head behind Barbarian Outpost. And we can pick up the stuff to start the Barbarian Bar Crawl. We're going to have to get that done eventually. And since we're here, we might as well get it started. So now, whenever we are passing by these bars, we could slowly get this stuff done. Or I could rush it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I did not mean to attack that guard. Well, at least now I know I could kick a five. All right, let's get to fixing. In a world where military grade fences are rarely military grade, one man stands at the brink of an impossible task bound by duty to repair the sacred fence of the mighty Captain Logoff, facing the ultimate trial of strength and skill. As every swing of his hammer, every touch of metal, becomes a battle against unyielding adversity. Witness the relentless struggle and self-inflicted mayhem where the real enemy is his own two hands. He is the Fence Fixer, coming soon to a theater nowhere near you. Finally, I don't know what took so long. We lost over half of our health trying to fix this fence. I've done this quest on other accounts and not once has it ever failed this many times. And what makes this even weirder is this is the only account I've ever done this on that had any strength levels at all. But it's also the only one that I've failed all these times. I don't understand. By the way, guys, I'm trying to reach 9,000 subscribers by October 1st. We are currently super, super close to getting there. And then after that, our next goal is 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Are these red goblins the ones from Goblin Village by Falador? I thought we already settled the debate on the colors. And Dwarf Cannon has been completed, giving us one quest point, 750 crafting XP, and the ability to use a Dwarf Monta Cannon. Also brought us up to a nice 50 quest points. And there we go, level 12 crafting coming in as well. And the next quest we have to do is going to be the Waterfall quest. I know you usually do this on accounts right when you start them, but because I did free-to-play quests and did Dragon Slayer and everything, we're not going to get as many levels as we normally would by doing the Waterfall quest at a low level, but we got to get it done and it is still going to give us a pretty decent boost. Decided to stop at the Grand Exchange to buy a rope for the quest, and while I was here, I thought I would buy 
bunch of teleporting jewelry just so that we have it in the bank. I don't think I missed anything. I'm pretty sure this covers all my bases. Never heard of a ring of returning before, aside from that purple ring from way back in the day from that, I think it was an Easter event. So I googled these, and what these do is they teleport you to your spawn point. So instead of wasting a necklace slot on a teleport, or I could even wear one as well, I could also have a ring that teleports me right to Lumbridge. And in the future, whenever I get different spawn points unlocked, I could use this ring to teleport there as well. And the waterfall quest has been started. While I was at the Grand Exchange, I definitely should have bought some stamina potions. I keep forgetting that they exist, and in times like this, they would be super helpful. So what I'm supposed to do in the next step of the quest is go down this ladder here, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is keep going through the maze and go through these loose railings. And from there, I could talk to King Borin, who is over here in front of this tree right here. And that should start the Tree Gnome Village quest, and it will give the option to follow Elkoi through the maze so I don't have to run through it again whenever it's time to do that quest. And Tree Gnome Village has been started. And now we can follow Elkoi back to the center, which also takes us right next to the ladder we need to go down. And now that we have the pebble, I could use the skills necklace to teleport to the fishing guild, which should bring us really close to where we need to go. This is really going to suck if I die in here somehow. Hey, it's the first time we're finally making use of the overheads that we got last video. Well, let's hope that everything is still up here. Okay, good. If I would have lost the graceful, that would have been super, super irritating. And here we go. The waterfall quest has been completed, giving us one quest point, 13,750 strength and attack XP, two diamonds, two gold bars, and 40 mithril seeds. I always thought this quest took a longer time than it did. It only took about 10 minutes, but completing it brought us up to 42 strength and 38 attack. It also advanced us three combat levels and we're now combat level 49. But now that's done, the next quest we are going to do is Tree Gnome Village. Tree Gnome Village is going to be giving us 11,000 attack XP. Hopefully that's enough XP to get to level 40 attack. That way I can wield rune weapons. Before I forget, let's go turn in these Marks of Grace, because currently, according to Runelight, they're going for about 12.2k each, which is very, very high right now, and I might as well get these things sold before the price goes back down if it does. So all in all, we were able to get 1,200 Amylase Crystals. Let's drop these in the Grand Exchange. And they sold instantly for 1.4 mil. Because I didn't do any of the quests yet that allow me to teleport to Artie, and not only that, I don't have 51 magic to do so anyway. I do have a bit of an idea. We're currently level 39 magic. We only need 322 XP until we get to level 40. So I'm going to get that real quick. And there we go. Level 40 magic. And we can now teleport to house. That is exactly what I want to do. So even though I don't have the quest done or the magic level to do so, what we could do now is teleport outside of our house, which would bring us right here to Remington. And let me hop worlds real quick to a house party world. Now that I'm in a house party world, let's go view the house advertisements. Hop into the top option right here. Now I could go over to the portal nexus and teleport to Artie. So yeah, because I'm not an Iron Man, I have the ability to teleport anywhere I want with only level 40 magic with three air runes, one law rune, and an earth rune. And that's what I call 10,000 IQ, baby. But you know, it's not 10,000 IQ. The fact that I just realized I forgot to buy stamina potions again. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I have this cheese and these gloves in my inventory is because right after we're done with this quest, we are going to go do the witch's house. No! Oh my god. I don't know how I'm going to recover from this five second loss from this misclick. And we were on perfect world record pace too. Jeez. I completely forgot I have to kill a level 112 during this quest. Coincidentally, the only reason I brought these chaos runes for Firebolt was because I was prepping to do Witch's House next. And I don't have any food and I have 21 hit points. Hopefully we don't get hit too hard. Maybe the protect from melee prayer would work. I'm not sure though. Seems to be working so far. We only have 16 health left. And this is why I got protection prayers out of the way. We did not take a single hit of damage. You know what I just realized? I thought the quest I was doing was the Grand Tree. Because I was expecting to have to go underground and find the root or the rock or whatever it is. I don't really remember. But I wasn't expecting this to be the last step of the quest. But hey, I'm not complaining. Tree Gnome Village is now out of the way in about 10 seconds after this weird mini cutscene is happening. Ooh. 
Very nice. Very nice. And there we go. Tree Gnome Village has been completed. And we are awarded with two quest points, 11,450 attack XP, a gnome amulet, and the ability to use spirit trees. We brought our attack up to level 41, which is very nice. And our combat level up to 50, which is absolutely beautiful. If we want to get to level 51 through range training, we need 54 range levels, which is crazy. We're eventually going to train range someday. Just not this day. But all right, let's head back to Valador and we can get the witch's house started. Freedom Village was a lot quicker than I was expecting it to be. And that's probably because I thought it was a different quest entirely. All right, let's get the witch's house started. Before we do this, I forgot to restore my prayer. But that's fine because we could actually restore our prayer right here at the altar of Guthix. I didn't even know that until I saw the icon on the minimap. I just assumed that this was kind of just for doing druidic ritual. Which I think is the next quest we're going to do because we haven't touched Herblore and we can't even really touch Herblore until we get that quest done. Oh my god, that just scared me. Hey yo, what the f- Bruh. I accepted the touch you option this time, as creepy as that sounds, but apparently it's still the same animation regardless, so I guess people somehow got offended by being forced to kiss a frog in a video game for a frog token. I don't know. And the ball has been secured. <gasps> no! What? Oh my god, that angle looked like I was in front of the- Oh my god, are you kidding me, dude? The angle that I was looking at looked like I was right behind the bush. Oh my god, that's so annoying. Do I have to fight them again? Please, no. Oh, nice. Okay, I guess not. Alright, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Alright, Witch's House has been completed, giving us 4 quest points and 6,325 hit points XP. Brought us up to 36 hit points. Which is still pretty bad because we're almost level 51 with only 36 hit points. That's wild. But I guess since we're here, we might as well start Druidic Ritual and unlock the ability to train Herblord. I also want to start doing farming runs soon. I'm not sure when. I think maybe once I get more teleports unlocked, like the Arty Cape and stuff like that. But I guess we'll find out eventually when I decide to do it. But anyway, Druidic Ritual has been started. Oh, while well, I'm here, before I forget again, I might as well buy some stamina potions. Sheesh, these are expensive. This will only buy 30 for about 300k. You know what's weird? We have the enchanted beef, which makes sense. We got the enchanted chicken, which makes sense. But then we have just enchanted rat, like a magical rat. And we also have enchanted bear. Never really thought about it, but I wonder if there's a limit on how long an item's name can be. Just like that, Druidic Ritual has been completed, giving us another four quest points, access to the Herblore skill, as well as 250 Herblore XP. Bringing us up to level 3 Herblore. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's it for this video. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you liked it. And I will see you in the next one.